I want to marry Mia, so I'm leaving you. I had no idea what Henry was talking about. Just after giving birth to her child, a young woman I had never seen before approached me. Henry looked at me, his expression as if this was all perfectly normal. Ever since we got married, you've done nothing but order me around and have a bad attitude, he continued. Maya was there for me when I needed someone to talk to. I felt sorry for Henry, thinking how pathetic it was that he felt bossed around by his wife. But in reality, he never did anything unless I told him to. I wanted to scream this at him, but I was too confused to form the words. This child will be raised by us. I managed to say, we'll take the baby. My body, weakened from postpartum fatigue, wouldn't respond as I wanted. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't even raise my voice. Finally, Henry reached out for the bed where our daughter was sleeping. That's when it happened. There was a knock on the hospital room door. When the door opened, Olivia entered. When they discovered Olivia's true identity, Henry and the young woman turned pale and trembled. My name is Milan Johnson. I introduced myself. I'm 29 years old and currently pregnant with my first child. My husband, Henry Johnson, and I were colleagues at the company we joined as new graduates. At our company, it's customary for second-year employees to mentor new hires. The idea is that you're not fully capable until you can teach others. Henry was very kind and taught me my job with great care. He answered all my questions without a hint of annoyance and offered just the right amount of help when I was stuck. I was truly grateful to have such a kind senior. A year passed quickly and soon it was my turn to mentor a new employee. Even then, Henry gave me advice on how to teach and communicate effectively. I think I was able to build a very good relationship with my junior. However, Henry wasn't especially nice to me just because we were partners. Even after we were no longer partners, we still worked together a lot. From what I could tell, Henry just couldn't say no when someone asked him for help. He couldn't turn down anyone in trouble, no matter how busy he was. Many people took advantage of his kindness, dumping work on him or coming to him for advice. I made it my mission to learn my job inside and out so that at least I wouldn't be a burden on Henry. Once Henry collapsed from overworking, everyone else was shocked, but I had seen it coming. I felt like my efforts alone didn't mean much because others didn't stop relying on him. Still, I regretted that he had been driven to collapse. When he confessed that I was the first to care for him to such an extent, we ended up getting married. Our first year of marriage was very happy, maybe because I asked him not to overdo it. Henry didn't take on as much work as before, but he still couldn't say no when asked and sometimes took on too much. That kindness of Henry's is one of his strengths. I made sure to watch over him so that he wouldn't overdo it. Then I found out I was pregnant. Henry was overjoyed, and so was I, however, I had severe morning sickness. Despite it being early in the pregnancy, I was hit with terrible dizziness and nausea, and I couldn't go to work. I was supposed to work for a while longer, but I ended up taking early maternity leave, combining it with the sick days I had accumulated. Even on maternity leave, I felt terrible. I had heard that morning sickness could be bad, but I hadn't expected it to be this bad. It was even hard to get up, and while I used to wake up earlier than Henry to prepare breakfast and see him off to work, now, I couldn't. I couldn't do that anymore. I was bedridden most of the time, spending most of the day sunk into the sofa, and our dinners were increasingly food delivery or ready-made food. Sorry, it's just ready-made food again today, I said. It's okay, the food is good, Henry replied. My headache was terrible, and dinner was ready-made food again but Henry ate it without any complaints. He never complained, but he didn't say much else either. The thing is, Henry often acted as if he didn't have a stake in whatever I was going through. He would ask if I was okay but didn't seem to think of cleaning or doing the laundry. Henry, I'm feeling really sick. Could you hang the laundry that's in the washer? Sure, got it. I'll take care of it. True to form, when I asked like this, Henry would do it promptly without a sour face. However, the fact that he wouldn't do anything unless I asked was quietly stressful for me. I almost asked, why can't you just notice? But I held back. It was my own selfishness, after all. He would get right on it if I asked. I've heard that in some marriages, regardless of whether the wife is pregnant or not, some husbands stick to the idea that housework is the woman's job and don't help at all. Compared to that, Henry is way more helpful. I kept telling myself this, but no matter how much I wished, Henry never took the initiative to do housework on his own. He would do it if asked but not otherwise. 
Once, when I had a slight fever, I thought he might notice if I left the dishes undone. But even after a full day, they were still there, and he didn't seem to question why. Henry, I've got a bit of a fever today. Oh, that's tough. Being pregnant must be hard. Even if he said that, his reply sounded like it was someone else's problem. I hate to ask, but could you do the dishes? Sure. But again, if asked, he would agree readily. It was frustrating. Eventually, I realized something. Henry definitely couldn't say no if asked. But upon reflection, he didn't do anything unless asked. I used to be Henry's junior. I relied on Henry to learn my job, and if I ever hit a snag, I consulted him. But I can't recall a single time that Henry ever initiated a conversation. It was the same after we got married. There were times before I got pregnant when this happened. Hey, can you pick up some groceries on your way home from work? Not a problem. I'll leave the stuff here. Thanks. By the way, we were about to run out of toilet paper, weren't we? Wait, really? We're running low on toilet paper. No, I didn't get it. You didn't ask for it. If I asked Henry to pick up groceries after work, he'd buy exactly what I asked for. But even if he realized we were running low on toilet paper, he wouldn't buy it unless I specifically asked for it. I hoped he would learn and stop needing reminders. But no matter how many times I asked for the same thing, he'd do it gladly yet never took the initiative. Here's the shopping you asked for. Oh, and the hallway light bulb needs replacing. Thanks. You got the light bulb too, right? No, I didn't get that. You didn't ask. What? You can't buy it unless you're asked. If you noticed, you could have just gotten it. Hey, what's with the sudden anger? I felt like I'd become more nagging over time because of this. Even if I said something, instead of reflecting, Henry just looked puzzled. So it wasn't worth my time. The stress of dealing with Henry seemed to be making my own health worse. They say pregnancy can make you hypersensitive. It must be tough, Henry said, as if it was none of his business. What do you mean tough? I let out a big sigh. Henry seemed clueless, troubled by my constant nagging. Then once I started feeling better, he began with, shouldn't you move around a bit? Have you put on weight recently? At the checkup, they said I'm managing my weight well, you know. Really? But you've obviously gained weight. Of course, I have a baby growing inside. I need to prepare for that, right? Hmm. <laughs> Even when I explained, Henry seemed unconvinced, his face not quite accepting what I said. He frowned as if to say he found my appearance distasteful. After that, he started avoiding me. He began coming home late or having dinner out more often. He claimed work was busy, but I knew that since his collapse, his department had been careful not to overload him with work. Moreover, they knew I was pregnant and even made adjustments. So he could spend more time at home, there's no way he could be working overtime. But being around Henry was frustrating for me, so I didn't say anything. After days like this, I received a call from a junior at work I hadn't spoken to in a while. It was Olivia Smith, a junior I had mentored in my second year of work. It's been a while, hasn't it, Olivia? Yes, Miline. How's your morning sickness? It's gotten a lot better compared to the beginning. That's great to hear. Olivia seemed relieved to hear that my condition had improved. Then for a while, I listened to how Olivia had been doing. Olivia was always brilliant from the start, acing her job, and has now climbed up to be the president's secretary. Despite being much more successful than me now, she still adores me as her senior. So, how about you, Maline? After hearing Olivia's update, she turned the question to me. Well, I'm feeling better, but there are some issues with Henry. As I spoke, Olivia's face grew stern. I shared my recent troubles with her, explaining how Henry wouldn't do anything unless asked, his poor perception, and his lack of initiative. As I spoke, I began to wonder if maybe I was expecting too much. After all, being pregnant doesn't mean I'm ill. Maybe I've been too dependent on Henry. What? That's awful. Contrary to my second guessing, Olivia was quick to judge. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that about your husband, but honestly, that's just not right. Olivia's firm stance was somehow reassuring. Indeed, Henry has been uncooperative with me during my pregnancy. Even if he doesn't do it on purpose, the fact that there's no improvement despite my reminders means he just isn't willing to change. Lately, it's like he's avoiding me, claiming he's got a lot of work. He's coming home late too. Do you really believe what your husband's saying about his work? Her question made my heart skip a beat. When I hesitated, Olivia bravely said what I had been fearing to think. I don't want to think about it, but could he be cheating? Cheating. It was something I had thought about many times recently. 
Henry's department was supposed to be slow right now, with no one doing overtime. I let out a sigh. Yeah, you're right. The most common reason for pretending to work late and not coming home would be an affair. I want to believe he's just avoiding me because I nag too much, but then I have to wonder who he's spending his time with and where. Olivia, I'm sorry to ask, but if you notice Henry doing anything suspicious at work, could you let me know? I think I'll do some digging too. All right, Olivia agreed. Even after asking Olivia for help, Henry still seemed to be avoiding me. Despite it being a slow period, he started working late and even coming in on weekends. Suspicious that Henry was really at work on his supposed working weekends, I reached out to Olivia for confirmation. She informed me that no departments were working on weekends. It made me wonder again, was he having an affair? By that time, I had stopped expecting anything from Henry. I was feeling stable and could move around more than in the early stages of pregnancy. Despite the heaviness of my belly, I slowly took care of all the household chores without asking Henry for anything. But of course, not once did he offer to help by saying, shall I do it? While I kept an eye on Henry's behavior, the baby in my belly grew healthily, and finally, labor began. Henry was absent, claiming to be working that weekend too. I tried to reach him, but his phone was unreachable, and there was no reply to my emails. I called a taxi on my own and headed to the hospital. Unlike my indifferent husband, Olivia rushed to the hospital to be by my side. Are you okay, Miline? I'm fine. I'll make it through. Where's Henry? She asked. He said he's working, I told her. Olivia bit her lip, holding back words. I knew without her saying that there were no departments working that day. I showed Olivia a thumbs up to hide my nearly tearful face and was then wheeled into the delivery room. They say giving birth is like pushing a watermelon through your nose and that's not far from the truth. After hours of agony, the sound of my baby's healthy cry gave me the greatest relief. The baby born was a girl. Holding her in my arms, I felt the weight and the love. But childbirth is indeed exhausting, both mentally and physically, and I fell asleep like a lump of clay. Here you are. I'm not sure how many hours I had slept. When I suddenly heard a voice, my consciousness surfaced. I must have been moved while I was sleeping. I was back in the hospital room I was assigned before giving birth. In the bed next to me, my newborn daughter was sleeping soundly. I wondered where Olivia had gone. I hadn't even had a chance to thank her for coming when the door opened abruptly without a knock. The baby's born, huh? It was Henry. Maybe because I was still tired from giving birth and waking from a long sleep, my mind wasn't working properly. I finally realized that Henry was there, but the young woman next to him was unfamiliar, which confused me even more. Wow, is this the baby? Her face is all wrinkly like a little monkey. The woman laughed as she peered into the bed. Hey, who is this woman? I asked. This is Mia. I'm planning to marry her, Henry said. What? Such sudden words made no sense, not because I was tired or just awake, but because they were incomprehensible. I want to marry Mia, so I'm leaving you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Staring in disbelief, Henry said to me with a face as if it were only natural. Because ever since we got married, you've done nothing but order me around, and you have a bad attitude. But that's, it was Mia who was there for me when I needed someone to talk to. I felt sorry for him, thinking how pitiful it was that he felt bossed around by his wife. Bossed around by me? It's the other way around. You don't do anything unless I tell you to. I wanted to scream that at him, but I was too confused to form the words. Maya used to be seriously ill and can't have children, Henry said with a pained look as he gazed at Mia. Maya's eyes moistened as she snuggled closer to Henry. So I figured it's perfect since I have a child. What? I couldn't comprehend what was being said. I truly could not understand. But Henry, as if it were the most natural thing in the world, pointed to my daughter sleeping beside me. We'll raise this child. We'll take the baby. What on earth are you talking about? I wanted to shout but couldn't manage more than a whisper due to the exhaustion from childbirth. Henry finally reached out for the bed where her daughter was sleeping. That's when it happened. Excuse me, a knock came on the hospital room door. The door opened, and in came Olivia. Olivia? Congratulations on your delivery, Miline. You did really well. Olivia came over, looked at me, and smiled kindly. It was then that I realized I hadn't received a single word of thanks or concern from Henry. Had I become nothing more than a means for Henry to provide a child for Mia? 
As I sat in shock, Henry stepped between Olivia and me. Olivia from the secretarial department. Why are you here? Don't you realize it's family time? Maya giggled at Henry's words, family time? Then what was he doing here? I was trembling with anger when Olivia tilted her head with a calm expression. What are you two doing here, Henry? What were you doing while your wife was giving birth, risking her life? Well, in the line, I brought the things you asked for. Ignoring Henry, who was mumbling awkwardly with a guilty look on his face, Olivia turned back to me. In her hand, she held an envelope. Maybe it's better to wait until you've settled down a bit. It's fine. I don't want him to get away. Plus, Maya is here too. I gave a wry smile at Olivia's concerned look while Henry and Mia both looked puzzled at us. So, you want a divorce and you want to be with Mia? Olivia asked. Hey, wait. Despite having made such an incomprehensible declaration earlier, now that Olivia was listening, Henry started to make excuses in a flustered manner. Saying no, that's not it. She's been taking it out on me ever since she got pregnant. I've been talking to this person about it, Henry murmured. Oh, really? Olivia responded to Henry's self-victimization claim. So, you've been pretending to work overtime and lavishing your mistress with gifts. No, no, that's not. This is your time card record. All the days you told Maline you were working overtime, you actually left on time. There's no record of weekend work either. How could you know that? I was the one who asked her to investigate. At my words, Henry's eyes widened in surprise. Olivia, taking full advantage of her role as the president's secretary, had obtained Henry's movement records from each department. The attendance records, exit logs, and expenses had all been reviewed, and it was clear that Henry hadn't been overworked at all. In fact, his department was in a slow period. If you want a divorce, that's fine, but I won't give up living with our daughter, and you'll pay child support. Why should I? It's your sudden change in behavior that caused this. You should be paying me. Then you should have just asked for a divorce from the start instead of cheating, you know. Just so you know, I've got all the evidence of your affair, I said and Olivia handed Henry the envelope. I had hired a detective agency to investigate Henry's infidelity. The findings over the phone were damning. I was going to pick up the photos and documents that served as evidence, but labor had started, so Olivia went to get them for me. Inside the envelope were photos of two people walking down the street arm in arm, looking very much like a couple. To anyone who didn't know them, they would appear to have the closeness of a couple. All the evidence is here. There's no escaping it now. I glared at Mia as I spoke, and she trembled with fear. It's not like that. Tears welled up in her eyes as she approached me. I didn't know Henry was married. What? I thought he was divorced with children. So, I thought if I can't have children, I want to help raise Henry's child. Maya sniffled. But I frowned, thinking her story was a bit too far-fetched. After all, Henry had just asked me for a divorce a moment ago, despite the fact that he was laughing next to me a moment ago. I'm not the bad one. I just want to raise a child with the person I love. Why should I be scolded for that? Maya exclaimed, her moral compass seemingly in desire, leaving me astounded. At this point, it seemed like there was no use in arguing or persuading her otherwise. Olivia, who had been listening to the entire exchange, let out a deep sigh. It's good that I called him. Olivia murmured before flitting the door to the hospital room open, and there stood the president. A man with a presence looking exasperated stood there. Henry straightened up as if jolted. I had never met him in person, but I recognized his face. Hey, Henry, I came here because my secretary called me and... What situation is this? Oh, this is... Henry was in complete panic, not having expected his company's president to appear. Of course, I was also surprised. I had asked Olivia for help, but I had no idea she had involved the president. Maline, sorry for barging in like this. First off, congratulations on your delivery, the president said, his tone changing completely from when I was glaring at Henry to a gentle smile. Oh, thank you very much, I stammered. I was asked by Maline to pick up some documents from the detective agency, and I made sure they were correct, Olivia explained. Yes, I said it was okay for her to look and when checking the documents, I recognized the face of Henry's mistress. Olivia continued. Inadvertently, I glanced at Mia. Maya looked away uncomfortably. Who is she anyway? The president asked. I had no recognition of Maya and didn't know where Henry had met her. I only knew from the detective agency's report that she worked at the reception of a subsidiary company adjacent to Henry's office. 
Maya is my niece, the president said with a heavy sigh. Yes, she's the daughter of my brother. What? Henry looked surprised, perhaps having kept the president's relationship to Maya a secret. Maya made an awkward face. According to the president, it was true that Maya had been seriously ill as a child, and that illness had resulted in her inability to have children. However, that had led to her being quite spoiled by her parents, perhaps out of their pity for her. It must have been her parents' affection, pitying Mia. It seemed that because of their pampering, Maya had grown up to be self-centered, expecting everything to go her way. With such a disposition, she couldn't find a job anywhere, and her desperate parents turned to her uncle, the president, who reluctantly employed her in the subsidiary company. And to think you'd go after an employee with a family, the president remarked with disappointment. But I? No buts. How many times do you intend to repeat the same mistakes? I can't look after you any longer. You're fired, the president spoke firmly. No way, Maya slumped dejectedly as the president's words sank in. Henry, you too. Leaving your pregnant wife to play around with a young girl? That's, you've been saying your wife has a bad attitude. She's carrying a new life in her. It's natural for her to be a bit on edge. You should have been more understanding instead of acting as usual. Ah, I will also take appropriate action within the company. After giving Henry a stern scolding, the president said he would take Maya to her parents and left the room with her. Olivia, his secretary, left alone. Alone in the hospital room were just Henry and me. A heavy, awkward silence filled the air. I'm sorry, Miline. I was wrong, Henry pleaded with me, trembling. Forget everything I said before. There's no talk of divorce. What I mean is, we're not getting a divorce, but we are. No, Henry. I'm going ahead with a divorce. I was going to bring it up regardless. And I don't think we can just pretend none of this happened. That's too convenient. I interrupted. But Miline, did he really think he could make things right with me after all this? It was just insulting. We got enough evidence for the divorce. Think it over. I had no idea Maya was like that. She just started playing the victim. I don't care about that anymore. What matters most to me is that my daughter has a peaceful environment to grow up in. Then you should know, a father's presence would be better. If a father is unreliable and a betrayer, she's better off without him. They say the resentment of childbirth lasts a lifetime, and it couldn't be truer, I retorted. Henry kept pleading not to be abandoned, but I told him if he made any more noise, I'd call the police. He left without another word. Afterward, my daughter and I were discharged from the hospital without any issues. I didn't return to the apartment where Henry and I had lived. Instead, I went straight to my parents' house. I had already told them everything, and they suggested. I stayed and relaxed for a while at my parents' house. They were delighted to see their granddaughter. Henry, realizing that I hadn't returned to the apartment with our daughter, came to my parents' house wanting to live together again. But I firmly refused, insisting that any further communication should go through a lawyer. Eventually, Henry and I divorced. Henry promised to pay child support properly. Since then, it seems that Henry has been transferred from working at the head office to a branch office in the countryside. The president, seeing how Henry seemed likely to continue harassing me, apparently made the decision to effectively demote him by transferring him to the countryside as a measure against his behavior. He hadn't been involved in significant projects since collapsing from overwork, and apparently, no one was troubled by his absence. Mia, who had an affair with Henry, was cut off by her uncle, the president, and fired from the company. Her parents, having had enough of her this time, apparently kicked her out, akin to disownment. While her illness was truly unfortunate, it doesn't justify her actions. As for me, I was able to spend my daughter's early years raising her at home, taking it easy. Once she was old enough to attend preschool, I went back to work. Having always worked hard not to be a burden on Henry, my career was valued and I was able to re-employ myself in a major company where I am now working vigorously. Olivia, who helped me a lot this time, has become even closer than before. We occasionally go out for meals and have become like friends who can easily talk about what's new in our lives. I plan to keep working hard for my daughter's sake so the two of us can live happily together.